Alrighty there, folks. Um, oh, and here we are with the with the little minimized window, so you guys can see the code better. Oh, we're gonna wait to see me show up on the other screen, so we can do our sound check. Yep, sounds good. Hope everyone's having a wonderful night. We are here just 30 seconds ahead of Problem 16 coming out, which is both uh, long enough that, that we're not in a huge hurry and also short enough that I don't really have to sit here and wax poetic ahead of doing the problem. I could just sit here and say, oh yeah, we have 17 seconds. If we check uh, the private leaderboards, let's check the work one because that's the only one where stuff matters. Uh, looks like Kevin Chung is two stars behind. Uh, Brian Kendall has not done yesterday's yet. All right, five seconds left. Day 16, Probasidea Volcanium. The sensors have led you to the origin of the distress signal, yet another handheld device, just like the one the elves gave you. However, you don't see any elves around. Instead, the device is surrounded by elephants. They must have gotten lost in these tunnels, and one of the elephants apparently figured out how to turn on the distress signal. The ground rumbles again, much stronger this time. What kind of cave is this exactly? You scan the cave with your handheld device. It reports mostly igneous rock, some ash, pockets of pressurized gas, magma, this isn't just a cave, it's a volcano! You need to get the elephants out of here, quickly. Your device estimates that you have 30 minutes before the volcano erupts, so you don't have time to go back uh, out the way you came in. You scan the cave for other options, and discover a network of pipes and pressure release valves. You aren't sure how, much uh, how such a system got into a volcano, but you don't have time to complain. Your device uh, produces a report, your puzzle input, of each valve's flow rate uh, if it were opened, in, pres uh, in pressure per minute, and the tunnels you could use to move between the valves. There's even a valve in the room you and the elephants are currently in, labeled AA. You estimate it will take one minute to open a single valve and one minute to follow any tunnel from one valve to another. What is the most pressure you could release? Valve AA has flow rate equals zero. Tunnels lead to DDIIBB, etc. Um, all the valves begin closed. You start at valve AA, but it must be damaged uh, or jammed or something. Its flow rate is zero, so there's no point in opening it. However, you could spend one minute moving to valve VB and opening uh, and another minute to open it. Doing so would release pressure during the remaining 28 minutes at a flow rate of 13, a total of eventual pressure uh, release of 28 times 13 equals 364. Then you could spend your third minute moving to valve CC and your fourth minute opening it, providing an additional 26 minutes of eventual pressure released at a flow rate of 2, or 52 total pressure released by valve CC. Making your way through the tunnels like this, you could probably open many or all of the valves by the time 30 minutes have elapsed. However, you need to release as much pressure as possible, so you'll need to be methodical. Instead, consider this approach. Uh, minute 1, no valves are open. You move to valve DD. You open valve DD. Valve DD is open, releasing 20 pressure here. Uh, here, BB and DD are open, releasing 33 pressure. You move to II, you move to JJ, you open JJ. Now JJ is open and releasing pressure. You go to AA, you go to DD, you go to EE, you go to FF, you go to GG, you go to HH. Uh, you open HH. Now you're releasing more pressure per minute. Um, you move to GG, FF, EE, uh, open EE. Now you're releasing slightly more pressure. DD, CC, you open CC. Now you're releasing slightly more pressure. And then just time continues to go until you expire. This approach allows you to release the most pressure possible in 30 minutes with this valve layout, uh, 1651. Work out the steps to release the most pressure in 30 minutes. What is the most pressure you can release? Get your puzzle input. Okay, let's look at the puzzle input. And then we're going to have to do on probably like a breath first search or something. Yeah. Um, so we want um, like a... a Hmm. Probably going to want a couple of hash maps. So for each thing, we need to put in what this thing is, what its flow rate is, and then what the other places that it goes to. So I'm going to make a map uh, string integer um, uh, valve to flow rate equals new hash map. And we'll consider whether or not this is reasonable. Uh, and then we're going to make a map string list string, um, which is um, val valve to uh, adjacent valves equals new hash map. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, while scanner dot has next line, string line equals um, scanner dot next line. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, string 
uh, uh, string parts uh, equals uh, line dot split space um, string name equals parts one. Uh, integer flow rate equals parts uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 uh, dot substring, and then we want uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, parts 4 dot length minus 1 to move off that. Is that right? Uh, and then we want integer dot parse int. Integer dot parse int, all of that. Thank you very much. We can put this on a new line so that it reads a little better. Oh yeah, look at that. Then we want a uh, list string uh, neighbors equals new array list um, for int i equals um and let's see we start so zero one two three four five six seven eight nine uh i is less than uh parts dot length plus plus i um and we want to get rid of the commas so if i is less than parts dot length minus one uh, neighbors dot add uh, parts i dot substring zero parts i dot length minus one. We just want to remove the last one else uh neighbors dot add uh parts i that should be good and then we want to valve to flow rate dot put name uh flow rate and we want valve uh, to adjacent valves dot put uh name uh neighbors Fantastic. At the end of this, we have a map of this, and we have a map of this, which, which should be fine. So now we want to, given that, and where do we start? Does it tell us? There's even a valve in the room you and the elephants are currently standing in labeled AA. Is there an AA in here? There is. Um... Yeah. We basically want to compute. Um, so now we need to like compute the best path. Uh, let's stop for a second here and debug this and see if we read this in right. Fantastic, uh, debug. Uh, for line 22, it's going to get mad. Okay. Uh, so let's just go here and debug again and see, see what happens. Okay. So we go down, get the parts, the word cl closest. What's, what's going on? Well, it probably would help if we weren't using level 15's data. Let's debug again. Stop and rerun. Let's go here, play forward. Valve to flow rate is size 55. Valve to adjacent valves is also size 55. Uh, so let's do a couple of like random checks here. Uh, valve to flow rate dot... Um, And then uh, let's see, get, and we'll want, we want to get SW. 
that has zero, got diet ZT that has flow rate zero, got valve QW that has flow rate 25. So that all seems fine. And valve to adjacent valves dot get, uh, let's start with SW that has LX and LD. Let's try uh, AA that has YX, TQ, uh, VO, GX, and QP. That also seems correct. I think that we've done this. Okay, so now we want um, int max pressure released equals uh, get um, max pressure uh, release uh, releasable uh, valve to um, flow rate valve to adjacent valves. Cool. And now we're just going to define this. So private static int get max pressure releasable. And then we want map string integer um, valve to flow rate. Uh, map string list string. Uh, what do we call that? Valve to adjacent valves. Valve to adjacent valves. There we go. This function signature is way too long. Let's move it down. So now what we want to do is we want to define like a recursive helper function. Um, so private static int. Um, get max pressure for remaining partial uh, path. That's going to take in the same two things. Uh, string current uh, location. Um, it's going to take in these two things. It's going to take in a list string uh, locations already open. Okay. Um, so now what we want is um, uh, and then we also want um, int uh, minutes remaining. Uh, so now this should just be return uh, Get max friendly for the remaining partial path, AA, which is where we start, uh, valve to flow rate, valve to adjacent valves, um, and then it's going to put in a new array list, which is empty. Um, and uh, minutes remaining, which is 30. Um, Okay, so first we want to, we want to like deal with two cases. So if uh, v valve to flow rate dot get current location not equals zero, zero, um, int. So first of all, let's start with the base condition. If minutes remaining is zero, return zero. Great. Now at least we'll terminate. Uh, flow rate equals, um, actually we just want this. We can do this check in a second. This equals this. So now we want uh, for string neighbor um, in uh, valve to adjacent valves dot get current location. Uh, and we want int uh, max flow equals zero. Um, uh, 
So first we want to see if we just like do nothing. Um, int, uh, without this uh, valve open equals uh, get max pressure for remaining partial path. We want to include a uh, neighbor uh, valve to flow rate uh, valve to adjacent valves. Well, that's, we should probably make this spell the word adjacent adjacent. Thank you. Um, uh, locations already open is still locations already open. And then, uh, minutes remaining is uh, minutes remaining minus one. Cause we have to travel there. Um, uh, max flow equals, uh, max flow. Um, is greater than without this valve open. If that's true, then it's max flow. Otherwise it's without this valve open. Uh, int with this, uh, valve open. Is there a way to like copy a list? Probably. Um, ignore the current location. And now we want if uh, this flow rate is greater than zero, then we also want to try opening this flow rate. Um, and when we look at it, when you open it, You open it and it starts releasing pressure on the next minute. Okay. Um, and with this valve open uh, equals Sorry, I'm trying to think. Um, I'm also thinking about how much of this is going to be double. We might have to build a cache. Well, let's make a note for ourselves. Maybe add a cache. Um, equals, let's see, uh, this flow rate times uh, minutes remaining minus one plus uh, get max pressure releasable. Uh, we want to copy this, but we have to make a couple of changes. We want this, but we want locations already open. Um, list string new uh, open list equals uh, new array list. Uh, and we want to give it locations already open. Is that right? If we click on this, is, does this make a copy? Instruction list containing the elements of the specified collection in the order they're returned by the collections iterator. Yeah, so it's just this is just copying the list, which is what we want. Uh, new open list dot add uh, current location. Uh, so this needs to be a uh, new open list uh, neighbor, blah, blah, blah. And this needs to be minus two. Why, why are we mad? What are we upset about? Create signature of this, 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 this. String. What do we? Oh, no, no, no. We want, oh, we just, we've called the wrong function name. We want this. That looks better. Um, and then we want this same thing. But uh, with this valve open. Then we want to return. Max flow. Is that right? That seems right. And so then we want uh, max pressure releaseable plus max pressure released. Now let's try running this and see how bad it gets. Stop and rerun. There we go. And that's why it had the highlight there. Wonderful. Uh, it seems real mad. Wow. 
Why are we? Oh, probably because this is equal zero and not uh, just, we should make this just less than one so that it plays nice with minus one. Okay, so now it's thinking. I don't know. I don't know how long it's gonna think. So it's gonna like traverse the full tree. Let me think if there's a way to cache this at all. Yeah, there should, there should be. Um, Um, private, static, um, map, string, integer, um, partial path, cache, uh, equals new, cache map. Uh, so now we want, we want to be able to turn current location, uh, Location's already open, minutes remaining into a thing. So let's, let's, um, so private, static, uh, integer. Um, oh, this is not, a, this is a string. Um, get cache, um, name. And this needs to be string location string um should be list string uh already open integer uh minutes remaining and we'll just see if caching solves this problem or if we need to do something smarter in our algorithm here um return uh okay so let's see String builder dot let's see return new string builder nope that's not what I'm looking for string builder um, dot append location dot append Uh, string builder builder equals new string builder that append location for string location uh, for string open in already open builder dot append um, open um, let's put in a little builder.append slash just to make it a little easier. And then builder.append slash and then builder. Um, uh, append uh, minutes remaining. Cool. So now we can call, uh, this seems fine. String cache name equals um, get cache name current location. Uh, locations already open, minutes remaining. Um, if, what do we, what do we call this? Partial path cath dot get cache name not equal null return partial patch cat dot get cache name otherwise we need to insert this at the time that we would return 
partial pass cat that uh, put um, get cash name. No, no, no. We already have the cat cash name and then max flow. Cool. So this has been executing for a while, so it's clearly not fast enough. Let's stop and rerun it. Missing return statement. Oh, uh, return builder dot build dot two string. Great. Nope, we don't want to debug it. Stop debugging, please. Please stop, sir. Done. Stop. Okay, now run. And we, we might actually try this on the smaller input just so we can see if we're making any kind of progress. Oh, we also want to make sure this dot flow rate, uh, if this dot flow rate greater than zero and um, locations already open dot get uh, contains current location and to not this. To probably cache, but that's fine. Uh, let's do this. This is, we're probably like opening and closing the same thing over and over again. Is pro probably the problem we're probably having. Stop and rerun. Sixteen fifty one. Is that right? That is right. Okay. So we might have fixed this for the real output too. We might have just been doing it dumb. That weren't ran so fast. Although we do have a much bigger graph. Well, how much bigger? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this is what? It's only 55. 1701. Hard to believe, but sure. That's right. Okay, cool. I got rank 129 on this star's leaderboard. Holy crap. Okay. You're worried that even with the optimal approach, the pressure release won't be enough. What if you got one of the elephants to help you? It would take you four minutes to teach an elephant how to open the right valves in the right order, leaving you with only 26 minutes to actually execute your plan. Would having two of you working together be better, even if it means having less time? Assume that you teach the elephant before opening any valves yourself, giving you both the same full 26 minutes. In the example above, you could teach the elephant to help you as follows. Holy crap. Oh, man. Okay. Jeez. Oh, gosh. With you and the elephant working together for 26 minutes, what is the pressure you could release? Oh, that is hard. Okay. Well, luckily we, we wrote some good stuff and we can just write a modification of the helper functions here. So first of all, let's grab the right input here. And now while Scanner has next line, we're basically going to create the same stuff through here. Um, so this should be fine. And this part is actually also mostly fine. Um, So we can replace this, except now we want English max pressure released equals um, for a pair. Cool. So now we're going to do this. We're going to add this at the bottom for a pair. So current location is AA. Uh, minutes remaining is 26. But now we need... Uh, like a new version of this that does something slightly more complicated. Um, yeah. And we're going to want a second one of these and we'll just uh, partial path cache uh, for pair. And we're going to want um, this same get cache name uh, for pair because there's two of us. There's me and the elephant. Or pair um, string location string location uh, elephant location uh, string list already open uh, integer minutes remaining this is fine uh, builder dot append uh, elephant location dot append another slash wonderful. Great. Um, dot append location. Dot append slash. Dot append element with your quick this. That looks better. Okay. So now for this, get max pressure releasable for partial path. We basically want. Um, nope, nope. Undo whatever I did. 
Undo it. Thank you. Copy. And now we go to... Um, this. Uh, for pair. Fantastic. String current elephant location. <laughs> ah, yes. Silly elephant. Um, because this is meant pressurable, releasable for a pair. Um, for a pair. Great, great, great. The valve flow rate's the same. The valve to adjacent valves are the same. What we've already opened is also like. Yeah, so we just need to do a little bit of special casing about like who can open what, but otherwise we're good. Uh, get cash name for a pair, current location. Let's move this down. Uh, current elephant location. Location's already open and let's, things don't go, things only go on multiple rows if you open them out like this. Cash, cash, for a pair, for a pair, I get cash name. Four pair, great, cool. It's all it's all different now. Um, so now what we want is to modify the thing. So this flow rate equals whatever. Um, int elephant flow rate equals uh, valve to flow rate dot get um, current elephant location. And we're gonna assume that if me and the elephant are both in the same room, then I'm always the one that opens because like we're, we're symmetric. We both move at the same rate. And we both do the same stuff. So we don't have to differentiate. So um, ignore the current location. Uh, ignore both current locations. Um, uh, and we want uh, four. Okay, uh, yeah, so we want for neighbor in this, and we want for uh, string elephant neighbor in uh, valve.to adjacent valves.get elephant, not elephant, Lori, elephant, current, current elephant location. Thank you. Uh, and this will go to here. There we go. So now we have the pair of these two things. Uh, so this needs to be for a pair. This needs to now have uh, elephant neighbor. So me and the elephant are both walking. The elephant and I are both walking. We both go down one. That's fine. Um, oh no, the fact that it takes a minute to like open the valve makes this gross. Okay, we're going to modify our logic a little bit. Um, so we're going to make it so you can, like, to recurse, you can either open a valve or... Um, yeah, so we have to change the way that we recurse, which is kind of a shame. Um... um yeah, geez. Because we can't just like modulate the amount of time. Sorry, I'm still thinking. I'm still thinking. This is hard. I can't believe we got 129. We almost scored. Gosh darn, this is hard. Okay. Um, yeah, because if the L, like, let's look here. Yeah. You open the valve, the elephant opens the valve. You move, the elephant moves. You move, the elephant moves. You move, the elephant moves. Oh, you open a valve, but the elephant moves, right? So we need to like have some way of capturing which each what each one of them is doing. Um, I 
Uh, we can like kind of do that though. So what we can do is um, we can try um, Okay, so here's what I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do. Um, I don't move, uh, neither does the elephant. I don't move, elephant does. Elephant doesn't move, I do. We both move. So I don't move, neither does the elephant. We want to call, um, uh, we basically want to call, um, so if neither of us moves, then we get, uh, int neither moves flow equals, um, minutes remaining minus one times uh, this flow rate plus elephant flow rate plus, and then we want to call uh, get max pressure for remaining uh, partial path for pair. And then we want to call, um, want to call current location, current elephant location, pass the valve, pass the valve to flow rate Pass the valve to adjacent valves. Um, we want to like copy the locations and we need a, a if, so we can only not move if uh, locations already open dot get um, <clears throat> contains a current location. If it doesn't contain either of these locations. So if it doesn't have this location and uh, nope, not uh, locations already open dot contains uh, current elephant location. Oh, we're gonna get a little bit of like mix and match here. That sucks. Uh, that's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll deal with that. We're just gonna get fewer cache hits because I don't wanna change the way that we create our cache, which I'll explain later. Uh, and the last thing that needs to go here is uh, minutes remaining minus one. Cool. Why, why are we mad? Uh, oh, and then we need uh, locations already open plus both of these. So list string new location list equals uh, new array list uh, uh, locations already open. Uh, and then we need new location list dot add uh, current location, new location list dot add uh elephant current location nope elephant it's current elephant location damn um great and so then we want a uh, new location list all right so that should it uh and then we want um max flow equals is the max flow greater than neither moves flow if so we want max flow otherwise we want Neither move flow. Great, cool. So that's that's great. Max flow, thank you very much. Cool, so that case is covered. So now we want, I don't move and the elephant does. If I don't move and the elephant doesn't, uh, then we want for string elephant neighbor in, uh, uh, it would be, what what is it called? It's called uh, valve, to adjacent valves dot get uh, current elephant location. So now what we want to do is um, so I don't move and the thing doesn't. So we want uh, we're actually going to just go ahead and make this a static thing outside of everything. Um, new location list, blah blah blah. All that matters is that we have a thing that we can shove there. So. New location list equals uh, new array list. Location's already open. 
uh, and then we want new location list dot add um, current location. We just want to add the current location, and then we want to call um, int elephant moves flow equals. So I want minutes remaining minus one times this flow rate. Plus, and then I want to make the same call with this stuff, except my current location, I don't move, but the elephant current location is now uh, elephant neighbor. And new location list is there and this. And then we want the same if, uh, not even if, we want the same max flow argument, which goes right here, max flow, and this should be elephant moves flow, great. Now we want to copy this and we just want to modulate a couple of things to see what happens if I move for string uh, neighbor in valves adjacent to current location. Uh, and so the elephant is moving. So that's the current elephant list gets added there. Uh, this should be current elephant location. This is neighbor because I'm moving and the elephant doesn't. This should be... Uh, elephant flow rate um, and this only makes sense sorry this only makes sense so if this flow rate not equal zero and uh, all, all, all locations already open that contains uh, current location because otherwise we're not going to try and open it twice Otherwise, we're going to go to the thing. Uh, so this one should be uh, if uh, elephant flow rate is not equal, sorry, is greater than zero, I suppose. If it were negative, I still wouldn't want to check it. Um, and this, and this is going to instead change to current elephant location. So, because if the current elephant location is already open, then the elephant's not gonna wanna open anything. Otherwise, we do this, the elephant flow rate, blah, blah, blah. The elephant stays here, but I move, and then I wanna go there, um, and then I subtract one minute, and then we should go, we check. And then if we both move, um, then I can actually remove this int. Uh, this should be these valves open now. Oh, I know, I'm a stickler. This, this, we move to both. We still have the same set of things and we go down one. And we only do this uh, whole thing if uh, do we need to check anything here. I think we can both move freely and it doesn't really matter. Um, and we can actually get rid of this check now. because That's fine. And then we're gonna put the partial cache and then we should be good. So now I think for part two, I think we might just be good. Let's, I can't keep it all in my brain to know for sure that I haven't guffed this up, but let's see. I'm actually gonna go back up and copy the input. Oh, we're already wrong. No, we did put 26 and it's still thinking, okay, let's start with this and see whether or not we get there. Cause we are, Kind of doubling the number of things that could happen. So let's stop and rerun this. Let's see if we can get uh, 1707. Okay, the fact that this is taking a while is making me nervous. Let's go to part two and make sure that everything is going fine, starting with here. Please stop and rerun. Got max pressure releasable for repair. Oh, no, I stepped over. That's dumb. Stop and rerun. Obviously, if we can get over that statement, then we're done. So we start at the current location, the valve flow rate, blah, blah, blah. A minute remaining is 26. So step into this, please. Yeah, sure. So we run here, then we go we go down, the cache is gonna miss. Okay, step up, get the cache name. 
A A A A blank A A. Um. The flow rates are zero. Um. I don't move. Neither does the elephant. Uh, oh, we probably also want to like. Uh, and uh, this flow rate not equal zero. And you haven't already opened this for the elephant. And the elephant flow rate not equal zero. Because otherwise you're, otherwise you're, sorry, greater than zero. Otherwise you're just wasting your time. Okay, let's, let's stop and run this real quick. See if that was saving us any time. It shouldn't say, well, it should save us. Maybe maybe we were doubling the amount of work we had to do. That should save us some. How are we doing, sweetheart? Oh, doing all right. I actually, uh, I think it was 119th or 126th uh, on the first part. Let's go to the leaderboard real quick. Yeah, out of thousands of people, yeah, 129, which you have to be in the top 100 to get a score. But Oh, no, I think this thing just finished running and it got the wrong answer. <laughs> all right, good luck. Thank you. Uh, 1707. Crap. Okay. All right. So let's see what's going on here. Uh... Yeah, that sucks. That's too much. So first of all, let's make sure... Yeah, get max pressure releasable for repair... That is called from part two, so we're good. And this starts us both in AA. Is that right? Took you four minutes, now there's 26 minutes remaining. And we started, when we did the other one, we started with 30, and that worked out, so that shouldn't change. 26, all the empty stuff. Um, yeah, so current location, elephant current location. See if neither of them moves. Does that does that help you? If one of them moves, does that help you? If both of them moves, does that help you? That feels like the right approach. Okay, let's see if there's any obvious bet bugs as we go through. So we step in. Obviously, we step in again. And now we're in the place that we care about. Okay, we're gonna miss the cash. We do the stuff. So, current flow rates are zero, so all we care about is moving us uh, to all of the neighbors. Do they ever move to the same place? I don't think they do. Though I, that might be happenstance. Oh, and then they just fucking chill. Got it. Um. Yeah, which does allow you to truncate a lot faster. So where is it thinking that we go? It's gonna have us both go to DD. Uh, step up, step up, step up. Yeah. just having them walk back and forth between the, the things, which is which can be fine, but is not generally what you want to be doing. Uh, what's nice is that, yeah, we get to 27, and then it's just going to return zero, which is great. Um, so then the max here is... Zero. So obviously that doesn't do anything for us. Yeah, so let's. Is there any way to like step up here? I just wanna. I wanna like roll up higher. It's nice that the location's already open. This kind of high. Um, oh, are we we're doing something weird where the elephant in the we're opening both while they're standing in the same location. 
so let's see. I don't move, neither does the elephant. And uh, current location dot equals uh, elephant. Nope, elephant. Current location. Great. That should probably help. Let's try rerunning and see if we get the right answer. That's what was going on. We were opening the same. I saw it was an even number of valves that had been opened, and I was like, hmm, that seems wrong. Now it's got the right answer. So let's do this again, and it should take longer to run, but it should still be relatively fast, and we'll think about if there's anything we can do to make running it faster. Which, like, I'm not super convinced of, but... It's okay, I'm just so hyped on having gotten the first part fast. This is a relatively naive solution. Yeah, 55 versus, this says what, 10? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, 10. And we could just, we could just wait. Trying to think how much. Because the cave network is like 55 deep, we have two of us, we can only touch 52 nodes. And so we're going to get like every permutation 52 deep. Which is like 52 factorial, which is long. Let's add some debug statements and we can, well, we'll keep it running, but we'll see if we can, uh, good stuff. I don't care about doc flavor. Thank you very much. Uh, private static final, uh, Boolean debug equals true. So we want to get max pressure for remaining partial path, uh, for pair. Um, get cache name for pair, blah, 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 blah. Location's already open, contains, blah, blah, blah. Um, if debug and uh, minutes remaining is 26, so for the top level, doubt dot uh, println. Finished testing a case, uh, new max plus max flow. We basically want to put this in all four places. Um, finish testing case where uh, neither moves. Let's put this there so it reads a little better. Finish testing a case where an elephant moves. Finish testing a case where I move. Finish testing a case where both move. Okay, let's stop and rerun. Uh, let's go. Let's go back to the run. Yeah, it's still running. Okay, so let's see if we can get a sense of how long this is going to be. Stop, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because if this is going to take a long time to even like get this first one or to get the second one, then we're going to know we have to do this computation a lot. Because we have to do uh, one plus How many, how many adjacents are there of A? I was gonna say 54, but that's not quite true. The average depth of this is like two. Yeah, we do call this with um, 26 and we set debug to true, right?
And it should get faster as it goes because it's it like computes all of the stuff in the first half. And then in the second half, it's just like always hitting the cash. Um, man, the real... We should always have a deterministic order for um, me and the elephant because it always adds mine first and then the elephants like to the list of stuff, which should be fine. And if we, or we stutter? No, we're fine. It just freaked out for a second. Yeah, 44, 45 frames per second. And IntelliJ is completely using up, uh, if we go to the performance here, CPU is pinned at 80 and that's partially because IntelliJ is just sucking up all of the resources. So if we look, you know, another P to that is obviously OBS. Uh, and Streamlabs taking up another bit. Discord talking up resources. Let's go ahead and close that. We can open it later. Oh, nope, we don't want to full screen it. The computer's already chugging. Um, okay, a little better. I'll close a couple of other things while we sit here and wait. I'm just trying to see if anything shows up. This is taking a really long time though. I'm trying to think if there's anything we can do that makes this better. We already cached some of our solution. Um, oh, uh, okay, so here's the thing that I'm thinking while we sit here and wait for this to run a little bit. So one thing that you'll notice is that um, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 of these that actually have any, um, that actually have any, um, Uh, flow rate. So one thing that we can do is we can just uh, I'm trying to think of what the possible permutations are. Let me pull up notepad because um, there's some assumptions. Basically what we could do is we could basically just um, generate an ordering um, have me go through the first and uh, so first we want to pre-compute the paths between uh, all um, relevant nodes. Then we want to generate an ordering of the nodes. Let me go through the first N um, in order. Elephant goes to the remaining um, 14 minus N. And this should be like 4 uh, N equals 1 to 14. Uh, C how many of uh, those we can get to and what the um Ever. It's crazy. Yeah, IntelliJ is now using 80% of my CPU. As you probably noticed by my inability to display any frames. Let's go ahead and click stop there. Yeah, it was already using 10 gigs of RAM. That's not good. Process finished with exit code minus one. Okay, geez. Um, oh, but we've gotten way smoother now. That's great. Um, Well, let's see, I'm having issues on my test computer as well. And I can't even check it because there are ads. Oh, great, thanks. Okay, this seems like much, much more attractive. This seems like a better solution. Which I'm curious now if we just go to the stats for the day. Only 77 people have done both, so we still have a shot uh, at scoring some points. Not that we would stop here otherwise. So we're actually gonna totally jettison this and we're gonna pre-compute uh, the distance for um yeah we're gonna pre oh good we're we're working now okay so let's uh this for a pair stuff isn't going to work for us yeah we both move um so let's do this and also 
that. And then we want to take this. We also want to do that and we'll delete it later. Um, I just want it there in case we need to reference it or something. And then we also want to do this. This is fi fine, but I, I'm good. I want to go to the top level and figure it out from there. So instead, what I want to do is uh, reading all this is fine. Um, what I also want to do is um, uh, list string um, uh, important uh, valves equals new array list. Um, if uh, flow rate greater than zero, important valves dot add name. Okay, cool. So we've got the important valves now. And now what we want to do is, um, is there, is there a pair class? We also want like a, a hash map, basically map pair string. Uh, map string, um, integer, uh, oh, we're gonna have to compute this later. So let's, let's start commenting, uh, read in the file store, uh, valve adjacency, um, Low rates uh, and valves with non zero low rates. Great. Um, uh, compute the distances from uh, one uh, valve with non uh, from every valve with non zero flow to every other valve with non zero flow plus the starting valve. Um, yeah, so we want to add at the end of this, we want to add, uh, imp uh, nope. Uh, if not important valves that contains a important valves dot add a and now what we want is a map string integer distance to um, uh, it's like distance between uh, adjacent import uh, important valves. Um, equals new hash map. And then we want this to be um, important valves dot size times important valve times size more more or less dot size. Excuse me. Basically, we want this initial capacity because um, we expect there to be the square of these, but divided by two. But what? If, you know what? It actually doesn't matter that much. We're not. We don't have to optimize that way. Um. So we've got this new hash map, and what we'd like to do. Let's go ahead and do this real quick, and also do this. I don't. I don't care. So um, for int i equals zero. Oh, let's let's go ahead and sort these because then we don't have to worry about the lexicographical order. Um, important values dot sort uh, string dot is there like or dot um, what what is the Oh, I should look this up where you guys can see it. I should look to my other screen. Uh, Java string comparator. Um, uh, 
I'd like to sort and binary search a static array of strings via the string.compare to method. Problem is that sorting binary search requires a comparator object. Uh, Comparator.comparing string.toString. String. Huh. Okay, apparently that works. Um, so now for until i equals zero, i is less than uh, uh, important valves dot size uh, plus plus i for int j equals i plus one uh, j is less than important valves dot size. This should actually be important valves dot size minus one uh, plus plus j. Um, oh, we need to figure out the. Now we need a we need a method uh, called uh, find shortest path. Private static uh, integer int uh, find shortest path uh, string start string end. Um, and then what do we want? Like uh, not list. We want map string list string uh, let's see valve to adjacent valves is what we've been calling that why did the music stop because I'm not on that tab that is correct we're just going to start back at the top though we prefer long songs um, if start uh dot equals and actually we want to like add a little helper thing that's got more stuff in there int find shortest path recursive string start string end we still need this adja adjacency map um but then we don't list string already traversed is that right sorry i'm trying to think what's the best way to get the shortest path given like a bunch of adjacencies Of a adjacency list to um, shortest path. Dexter's algorithm for adjacency list representation. Oh, that's not. This is it's too complicated. I'm looking for like a shortest path in a non-weighted graph. Object. Each object contains an array list. Um, vertices. Dexter's algorithm. Blah blah blah. Here's an example. Okay, all right. I've just got to... I was hoping that I could get something that would implement it for me, but that's fine. Uh, find shortest path recursive. Is that right? Um, uh, start at equals and turn zero. Otherwise, uh, int min dist equals integer dot... Uh, max value for uh, string next in uh, valve dot two adjacent valves dot get start if not already traverse dot contains next then we want list string new traversed equals already traversed uh, except we want new array list of already traversed and then we want new traverse dot add uh, next yes and then we want um, uh, 
return one plus um, find a shortest path recursive next and valve to adjacent valves uh, new traversed. And for this one, we can just say list uh, string already traversed equals new array list already traversed dot add start just so that it plays nice return find shortest path recursive um, start and uh, valve to adjacent valves already traversed great we don't want to return this uh, int this dist equals this if this dist less than min dist, min dist equals this dist. Wonderful. Uh, and then we want to return min dist. And I think that this should do fine. It'll always terminate. It'll always do all the stuff. It's not going to be the fastest thing in the world, but we don't have a huge thing. So now we want to put in. Uh, for this, we're gonna have like a weird convention here where we have um, distance between adjacent important valves dot add or dot put. Uh, the string key is gonna be uh, important valves dot get i plus important valves dot get j. Um, oh, we're actually gonna do something nice. Uh, so we're gonna go int uh, shortest path length equals find shortest path. Uh, and we want this same set of things. Want this comma that, cool. So now we've got the shortest distance between the, the two of them. Uh, oh, and we want like valve to adjacent valves. Wonderful. Let's just do that. Uh, we want to input shortest path link. And then just so I don't have to care about ordering and stuff later, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the same stuff, but where the, the keys are reversed. Just because I think that's going to get a little nicer. There we go. So now I can just take any two points, add them together, and find the shortest distance between them, which is great. So now I've got every everything. Um, so now basically what I want to do is I want to like send each. Uh, now what I want to do is I basically just want to like try sending each. Uh, try sending each person to like just a, a random one of the things and the the other one to the and the elephants to the uh, to the other random one and then we just like keep sending them so basically we want to like yeah so now we've got to do what is this like so the first thing we need to do now is we need to um i've got to think about this Let me just write a write a function to do this. Um, int uh, max pressure released equals um, traverse important points. Um, max pressure from important points, and we're going to put in um, valve to flow rate valve to adjacent valves um and then we basically just want to partition them and then we want to just try every ordering of the partition uh and then we can put an important ordering of the partition into the cache and try uh, checking the cache for hits um
So it's going to be like 2 to the 14 to just put every possible thing in there. And then we've got to like find the the equal and opposite pair that has the, the maximum sum, which doesn't like quite, that doesn't like quite read the way that I needed to, but you guys get what I'm saying. Um, so we need important values. Yeah, that, should, that seems like it should be fine. Trying to think of if there's like a good way to like get all partitions. Uh, this is something that would be easy in Python. Java get all partitions of a list. Find all partitions of a set in Java. Virtually find all partitions of a set. I'm going to translate this into Java. Wow, that's gross. Infinite recursion while executing it. You're very close to the right answer. You're getting an infinite recursion. The reality is your program is running an infinite out outermost loop. Yeah, I just want all, all uh, get all by partitions of a list. No, I want all by, I'll, uh, implement by chart. Um, okay. How many bar partitions are there? So it's like 14 choose two. Let me see what 14 factorial is. How big is this gonna be? Uh, 14 factorial. Oh good, I typed and nothing happened. That's... 87 billion? Okay, that's not insane. It's kind of slow, but it's fine. Okay, so we want this, and we want to do the same thing where we have the recursive stuff. We can actually even... Yeah, so let's... Okay, all that stuff is fine. So now we want this. Private, private static, and this all right let's get the types right um map string integer this map string list string this and list string that um so now let me think about how how we want to we could like get all the partitions and just like try it but we could also just have that have them randomly select next ones um and we could also write a function that just like yeah just trying to select all the next ones um Yeah, there should be some really fast way to do this. Man, algorithms are hard. Okay, so we want basically a version of this. It's kind of it's kind of like the function signature is going to look kind of like this, if we're being honest. Uh, but we're going to name it something else. Uh, get max pressure um, for remaining partial path um, for pair um, with important points list. String already open, list, string, important valves remaining. Oh, so this isn't great.
uh, a byte, a kilobyte, a megabyte, a gigabyte. This would be eight gigabytes times the size of the list, which I like kind of have enough RAM for, but like not quite. I'm just trying to think of how we like generate the partition well. Um, the nice thing is we can assume that the partition is like kind of equal in size, right? Like if we look at the example, how many does the elephant go to and how many does the person go to? Oh, let's refresh the stats. Let's see. Oh yeah, we're 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 not going anywhere now. We're gonna we're gonna be lucky if we get over a thousand or under a thousand here. Okay. Um. So let's see. Elephant goes to DD. Opens CD. So the elephant opens one. The elephant opens two. The elephant opens three. Uh. You open one, you open two, you open three. Yeah, and because of the minutes thing, um, oh, we can just track the minutes separately and then, and then uh, have another function. So int person minutes remaining int elephant minutes uh, remaining. Great. So we've got the current location, the current elephant location, we've got all this stuff, locations already open, important valves remaining, all this stuff. Uh, okay. So first of all, we want uh, important valves dot remove this now. I don't care about that. Uh, oh, and we need our adjacency thing. We need our map string integer um, distance between important valves, uh, which now means when we go back up to part two to input the, the thing that we computed that we then use nothing but important valves that sort. Distance between adjacent input uh, important valves. There we go. Uh, we should rename this though. Just distance between important valves. They aren't adjacent. That's the whole. That's the whole point of having have the distance. Uh, so if we go here, uh, this is all fine, uh, and we need a map string uh, integer. And each, uh, between important valves. Cool, because that's all we really care about. So we actually don't even, even need the valve to adjacent valves in here. Like, that can actually go away, because now all we care about is this. So, uh, what's our termination condition here? Um, so int uh, max flow equals zero. We want to return max flow, and then what are the what are the cases? Um, uh, so if important values remaining dot size is less than one, return zero. Um, with all the remaining valves. The elephant tries to deal with all of the remaining valves. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to think about whether or not some of the order stuff here matters. I kind of, I'm, I'm just trying to think of like for our for our cache stuff because our cache is just like what stuff is already uh, open and where am I and where's the elephants and stuff. Um,
oh yeah this actually should totally because all we care about is like what's happening after this so the locations for already open doesn't matter except we do want to go uh already open dot sort uh, and then we, what was it? Comparators dot comparing string, uh, compare to, was that right? Comparing, uh, string dots to string. Okay, great. Uh, that should make our cache better. Uh, get cache name for pair is still fine. Um, If uh, get cache name for pair uh, current look current location current elephant location um, locations already open uh, minutes remaining doesn't work anymore we've got a uh, let's 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 mess with this. Um, int Elephant minutes minutes remaining. That's not quite tr true, actually. All that matters is that we have um, it doesn't. It doesn't matter how many minutes each one has remaining. All all that matters is. No, no, it does because of the the points that they're in. Um, yeah, let's make this an int, by the way, and then we're going to do this same thing, but for elephant minutes remaining, because they're at different places. So you can't just like my, my thought was that it doesn't matter what these two things are, but it does, and we can just uh, append them like that, and it'll be fine. Um, uh, person minutes remaining, elephant minutes remaining. Uh, Uh, partial cath cath for pair uh, at get this. Uh, in fact, we want string cache name equals this so that it just things don't get ugly. It's still ugly, but that's okay. We're just gonna hit enter until things look less bad. Uh, nope, please, please do not delete that. There, 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 there. Get uh, cash name not equal null. Return partial path cat for pair dot get cash name. Wonderful. And then at the end, we need to remember to put stuff in the cache. Not put uh, cash name uh, max flow, which is the. Maximum that we can turn off. Okay. Right through all of the valves for me. Um, we're actually going to do if this or um, Person minutes remaining less than one and elephant minutes remaining is less than one, then return zero. Uh, just to save ourselves some time. Uh, iterate through all of the valves for the elephant. It's cool. So for string next in uh, important valves remaining, uh, If, uh, actually don't have to if, Un undo whatever I just did. Uh, return, um, we want person minutes remaining minus uh, distance between important valves dot get uh, current location plus next. Uh, times uh, 
valve to flow rate dot get uh, next. This is not return. Uh, int this flow equals time flow rate added plus, and then we want to call this same thing, but we want to move our current location and stuff. Uh, so we need list string um, Do we need locations already open or do we need important valves remaining? We'll keep both, but eh, it's kind of annoying. Um, locations open equals new array list. Uh, locations already open. List string um, uh, new valves remaining equals new array list. Uh, important valves remaining, uh, new locations open dot add next, uh, new valves remaining dot remove next. Yeah, and so first we actually do want if uh, person minutes remaining minus this. So let's call this uh, ant time to, uh, to next location equals this. Um, time remaining at next location. If time remaining at next location is greater than zero, then we want to do all this stuff. Otherwise, we don't we don't care. Why will you not tab over? Why are you making me do this? I don't want to do this. Okay, well, that part certainly isn't what we wanted, but we got a little lazy there for a second. Okay, that looks a little better. So current location is actually now next. Uh, current elephant location is the same. Uh, valve to flow rate still comes in. Locations already open is now new locations open. This is now uh, new valves remaining. Um, and distance between important valves stays the same. Uh, person minutes remaining is now time uh, remaining at next location and the elephant minutes remaining is the same. Um, if this flow greater than max flow, max flow equals this flow. Wonderful. Now we just want to do this same thing, but for the elephant. Um, equals elephant minutes remaining. Uh, this is, should be current elephant location plus next. There's an, an empty space there for no reason, so we'll still copy all the same stuff. This flow is now, uh, oh, we don't have to do this computation twice. This can just be, uh, I'm remaining at next location. So now we can move this up a line and things will read a little better. And so similarly, this should be time remaining at next location. Just, just, just that. Um, Times valve flow rate, which is indeed the flow rate added uh, to the total. But we're going to delete that comment because it doesn't seem like it matters. Uh, this should be current location. This should be next. Uh, and yeah. Um, now we probably need to wrap. We could wrap it all in 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 a like if person minutes remaining is greater than zero, but we're actually getting that check right here um, every time, so it's not 
go going through this set of gets is not killing our time. And then we put the path cache in. Okay, uh, and then we want to call return uh, get max pressure remaining for partial pair with important points list. Uh, a a a a. Um, uh, valve to flow rate. Uh, new array list, uh, which is locations already open. Uh, important valves. Um, distance between important valves, 26, 26. That seems right, don't it? And then it's just going to give us the maximum thing. It's going to give us this, and then it's going to put it in the cache. Okay, so let's try it on the small data and see what we get. Uh, that's the big data. Take me to the small data, you fool. Seems better. Paste. Run, please. Um... Required integer. What did I? That something. Oh, valve flow rates. So we don't actually need the. That's right. We actually don't need the adjacent valves. Is what we determined. Oh, and when we didn't. We just didn't print out the answer. That's dumb. It ran very fast though, so that's nice. Give me the right answer. Pressure releasable is zero. Less than it should be greater than min dist. Oh no, that's that should be less than. Uh, so let's go back down to where we did this. Okay, let's um. Let's debug here and see what we get. Uh, so that's false, that's false. So we're, we're good. Cache name equals whatever. Uh, max flow is zero. So we've got BB. Um, person minute remaining minus, uh, what is the distance between, oh, or caps locks. Distance between important valves dot get a, A, B, B. That's no good. Okay, so we're not finding the shortest paths well. Um, uh, int, uh, Remaining length equals find shortest path. We're probably like overflowing. If uh, remaining length is less than integer dot max value, then we can do all of this. Remaining length and check all this stuff. Okay, so now what happens if we debug, stop and rerun? get there uh let's look at uh distance between important valves okay well now those are real values so that's nice so what happens if we just play and we remove the debug my headset's almost dead console max pressure relieved 1960 i don't think that's the right answer yeah 1707 Do you have to do like a minus one or something? So where are we? There's 26 minutes left. We move, let's say one, two, three. So like we look at the elephant, the elephant moves uh, to DD and then opens DD. And so then it's, this was only one away, but we needed to subtract two because it needed to open the thing. Yeah, that's, First of all, let's shift F6 and make this elephant minutes so that it's better. Thank you. Um, time remaining location is this minus the distance minus one because we have to open 
open the valve. Okay, now let's run it. How did the max pressure releasable go up? Oh, it didn't. It went down. Minus one. And we probably need to put minus one here. We're now probably... Eighteen seventy nine. That's we're still we're still over. So what else is is going wrong here? We have person minutes remaining. That's twenty six. And then where where does this one go in like the real thing? So the elephant moves to DD and opens valve DD. Uh, which if we look at our adjacency graph, AA connects directly to DD, so there's 26 minutes remaining, you move to DD, there's 25 minutes remaining, you open DD, it should be 20 times 24. Let's see whether or not that's that's what's happening. Okay, let's go back to here. And I need to fix my headphones because they're gonna die and it's gonna kill me. Oh no, I turned them up. Oh, it's so loud. All right. Important valves remaining size less than one. It's not the size of six. There's six important valves. Does that make sense according to this? Excuse me. Uh, and did I get distance this? And it should be tens of valves. Do I get next? That time remaining at lo next location. Yeah. So that seems better probably okay um so are the distances between them correct so if we look let's make this smaller so that it actually like does the right thing nope you need to come all the way down my friend thank you so um and let's just look at the at the things and see if we get the right answer so um Important valves remaining. Distance between important valves dot get A A B B. They are one apart. What about uh, B and C? Is that right? Do B and C connect? They do. What about uh, A and J? Two? Is that true? It goes to I. I goes to J. Yeah. What about uh, H goes to G, goes to F, goes to E, goes to D, goes to A. So A and H should be pretty far apart. Five, is that right? A, um, to E, to F, to G, to H, is that right? To E, to F, to G, A to D to E to F to G to H. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. So that's that seems fine. So we get the cash hit. There's no cash hit. What's the next flow? So what's the next remaining valve? So from A to B is one. It takes two to open. So there should be 24 minutes remaining. And is that the? Oh, well, it doesn't help that this is so huge. Uh, time remaining next location is 24. Um, and uh, valve to flow rate dot get bb is 13 times 24 is 312. Great. So now we've got new locations open, includes bb, new valves remaining. 
is about to remove BB, so it just says C D E H J. C D E H J. That seems right. Um, oh yeah, it said val it said valve to flow rate size equals 10 and i was like mm, that's not it's open for but yeah 13 we're good it's the size i thought i was saying the value um cool so we run keep running we're gonna get uh the partial lists are so much shorter here so here the important valves remaining is just hh so if we go there So for HH, there's still time left. And if we go, we see um, H, uh, whoa, why is it? Okay, so this should return zero. So, memory location, this low greater than max low is true, this flow is 110 because there's five minutes remaining and HH has flow level 22, which lines up. So we'll do this and now we'll see, we gotta iterate through all the elephant locations. This should give us a much bigger number though. about to step up which is 440 because the elephant goes straight to um, HH getting it to from GG just so it's five away so it should be 21 is that right what is time remaining at next location 20 okay yeah 20 times this which is much bigger so it should be returning that Man, I wish there was a way to return multiple things here. Keep going up. Um. trying to think if there's anything else here like why i just don't know like arithmetically why we're getting the wrong answer okay let's let's stop debugging for a sec cancel stop run let's just see do we get another different answer that is still wrong no we're just looking for 1707 which unfortunately works for our other solution Okay, I want to come up with like an even easier thing. AA has flow rate zero. It connects to BB um, and CC. BB and CC exist. They both only connect to AA. Um, and they both have flow rate of 10. So if we run this, expect it to be 24 times 10 for both of them. Okay. Um, and then if we add valve DD has flow rate equals 10. Tunnels lead to, we're just gonna do this cause it's only gonna connect to CC. Um, and now we run this, then we expect 480, and then we expect to get to this one two minutes later and add another 220. So we expect it to be 700. Uh, 
Okay, so I think we've found some of our issue here, and this should be um, stop and rerun. What is this, benchmarking? That's cool. Oh, with coverage. Neat. Um, all right, let's get down here. Um, there we go. I know this stuff is a little small for you guys. Sorry, I, I don't think I can affect that. Like if I, yeah, nothing happens. I can't change the size of this font. No, it's a new watch. It's not an increase in font size. Well, I'm sorry, guys. Can't do anything for you here. So in this first one, we're doing fine. The important remaining uh, valve names are B, C, and D. The valve flow rate has them all as 10. Um, and we're starting at AA for both of them. There's nothing there. Um, time remaining location is greater than 0, 24. Um, we want to see what happens. What is the distance between the valves? So A to D is 2. What is B to D? 3. Okay, good. That's what we want. Excellent. Okay, cool. Um, so this one's going to go to B. Uh, and it's going to add 240 in. And then it's going to take us inside. So now we're at B. And now it's going to say, okay, what if we went to C? Which we could. Takes time remaining in location 20, 21. Oh, because we got to go back around to C, okay? Because uh, B to C is far apart, right? We got to go two over, and then we got to open it. That makes sense. Cool. And then it's gonna try and send you to D, and it's gonna say the max flow rate is, yeah. It's gonna take. You walk over one, you open one. So now it's 19 times 10 is 190. So now if we go down, this is 190. What if we sent the elephant there instead? It's probably better to send the elephant there. Oh, do we do better if we just send the elephant straight there? Yeah, 230, and then the other one does 240 plus 210. Just 550 plus 230, 780, um, which is not what we got. Okay. same one second i gotta whiteboard this i know i'm not gonna move the camera that's we're just gonna live with the fact that you guys can't see the whiteboard so one thing we have clock open clock open and the other person has clock open or we have clock open clock clock open and we can have clock clock open so this is uh six factory one two three What's happening? What's happening? Um, can I make this return a, a, a pair of where of a, 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 a like trio? Um, yeah, let's make a little. Uh, private static class location look. Uh, Elephant location uh, max flow. Um, string. Little K. 
applications. Location, history, elephants, location. Uh, let's actually just call it path, elephant path, max flow. So string path, string uh, elephant path, uh, int max flow path. Okay, cool. Um, and then we want path elephant, uh, elephant path max flow. String path, string elephant path, mint max flow. And this can we, what if we, this dot path equals path. I'm just gonna copy paste this a couple of times. So now I actually want this instead of an int, I want this to return a path elephant path max flow. One second, please. Man, I just had to rip a disgusting fart. Oh no, the recording value says it's stuck at an hour and 32 minutes. We're just gonna pray that that hasn't frozen. Um, which it might have when the CPU did all of the things. We're going to find that out later, though. Um, we can probably do a little check by checking whether or not our performance on the F drive is non-zero. It is non-zero. We're getting a little a little trickle of stuff that we're writing. That's good. All right. And let's click stop real quick. Um, we don't want to return. Oh, we don't even want this. This, this isn't even... Uh, this now needs to be path, elephant path, max flow. Um, um, so now this flow is instead uh, path, elephant path, max flow. Um, we're actually going to rename this class paths and max flow. Cool. So this equals this. So we're going to get this. And then we're going to say this flow dot max flow plus equals this. Wham, bam, look at that. We're gonna say, what up, checkmate? I'm trying to do admin of code. It's really hard. It's super hard. I'm, I'm basically doing, um, I'm doing like a, like a walk of a graph, but with two people traversing the graph at once. And then like, there's like a time limit for how long they can be on the graph. And you have to like compute a value based upon like what order they traverse stuff in. It's hard. I'm having a hard time. I'm also still furious about how my corporate test league game went today. <laughs> very, very mad. Um, what problem is this solving? Uh, it is solving this, which if you cannot see, uh, that would make sense because you've not yet done advent of code. Here's the general gist. You're in the middle of a volcano. There's a bunch of caves uh, and there's valves in each of the caves and each of the valves like has tunnels leading to other things so you have a graph represented like this and each valve has a flow rate so for part one what you what you want to do is you want to figure out okay how much pressure can you relieve if you run around the tunnels for 30 minutes where it takes you one minute to traverse from any valve to any adjacent valve and it takes you one minute to open the valves uh thing so for example if you start with 30 minutes you start in a and you walk to d and then you open d then um like this then you open d uh like on minute two. So first one you move there, second one you open it, and then for the remaining 28 minutes, you're releasing 20 units of pressure per minute. So 20 times 28 or whatever, 20 times 20, so 400. 
you rage quit watching that game. I can only imagine what it felt like to play. Oh yeah. I, oh my gosh. I'm so furious. This flow dot max flow is greater than max flow. Oh yeah, we actually have to do, I'm trying to make it so that I can like see some paths as I go so I can catch, I just have a little bug and then I get to be done today, but I have to, I have to catch the bug. Um. Okay, get mass pressure remaining for partial path, blah, 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 blah. That seems fine. I can't return max flow because max flow needs to be uh, new. Tad's in max flow. Zero. I don't care about this. I don't care about this. So I actually want to move this to the top. Um, make it drop. Current max flow. Seems better. This isn't an inch. This is a path and max flow. Yeah, you must you hire your to win went on Leech Chest this week. What was the rating of your opponent? Seems better. No, so I've got to do the same thing that I did there. Uh, it's greater than max flow. Got max flow. Go to max flow. Rename it. Uh, adds to max flow. Thank you. Um, otherwise, this should not be an int. This should be a paths and max flow. This flow. I need you to return the one underneath, and then I need you to say this flow dot max flow plus equals this. There we go. This flow dot max flow is greater than paths and max flow dot max flow. Paths and max flow equals this flow, and so I also need to modulate the paths, which is now um, for for this one I iterated through. So my path has been um, this flow dot um, path equals current current or next. I gotta say twenty six thirty. Jeez, that is really high. Okay. Wonder for the math to make sense. Do I need to input the current location or the next location? The next location. Next plus this flow dot path. We're actually gonna go to this real quick and we're gonna refactor this to be person path. Yes. Okay. Good job, you've done it. Back to this. Okay, that, that seems right. So now we have to do the same thing here with this flow dot elephant path equals um, next plus this flow dot elephant path. Right. Okay. It's gonna cache all the stuff, that's fine. Is that all that we needed to do? That seems correct. So now we can't return this. Uh, we can. Uh, paths and max flow. And now we just go to where this was called. Paths and max flow. Um, next pressure release to dot max flow. Uh, person path equals uh, AA plus this because we know that it's not going to do that. Person path, and then we want this same thing but for elephant path. Have all these coding problems been solving the single problem or the multiple? Uh, each one of these has been a single problem. Uh, each problem has two part parts. Okay, let's see if this does it. So, like, you do. So like you do part one where just you were running around and you had 30 minutes and then you did the thing for part two like so you do the thing i got i got the answer for mine it gives you the answer for the sample you know and then you got your own thing here which is part of the problem what are we oh crap there, there we go 
Um, and so then once you solve part one, it gives you part two, which is harder. So for this one, it says, okay, now you only have 26 minutes and you and the elephant are gonna run around and each open up valves independently. Um, max pressure release will equal 720. What? Huh? <laughs> That's my paths don't make any sense. So this is false. We're not hitting the cash. Um. Okay, the time remaining is going to be twenty-four. So we're getting the next uh, new locations, and we're going to go to this flow, and then we're going to figure out. So now. We go to here, there's nothing in the cache. Uh, we're gonna go to C. Uh, we're in here. We're gonna go to D. Advent, uh, Advent is an advent calendar. Yes, that is why it is called Advent of Code. Um, so this should go in and should get zero back. Fantastic. Uh, which should be the time remaining was 19 and the valve flow rate was 10. So one, 190, is that right? Yes. DD. Cool. Uh, it's going to go back down through and it's going to see if we put the elephant through. Does that do better? Which it does. Can I help you? Okay. Yeah, it's hard. I think I've got it. I just, there's a bug and I don't know what the bug is. Uh, hey. Oh, this music's too loud for me. I'm turn it down. It's freaking me out. Okay. Uh, cool. So the elephant path is DD on this one. Is true. We'll go past the next log with this. Uh, so now it's going to put it in the cache. How much time do I typically spend on this? This has been the longest day so far. Usually it takes me here. I can show you. We're we're going slow, so I don't feel any pressure to like go particularly quickly at the present moment. So I go to the leaderboard and I go to my personal stats. Eight, uh, to do both parts, 14 minutes, 9 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, 26 minutes, 9 minutes, 50 minutes, 20 minutes, 38 minutes, 22 minutes, an hour and 4 minutes, 35 minutes, 41 minutes, 26 minutes, an hour and 6 minutes. And this one, the first part took me 26 minutes, but the second part has taken me over 2 hours at this point. Um, so this is probably going to be one of the harder problems. But I, just, I have a small bug and I don't know what it is. Uh, what is Paths of Max Flow in this case? So if we step up now, this flow is greater than the other thing. Is that true? Yes, 440 is greater than zero. How did we get 440? Uh, let's find out. Let's look at paths and max flow. The person went to CC. This person, this thing went to DD. So if the elephant goes to DD, how much time does it have left? Because B is connected to D in my sample set. No, C is connected to D. So A went to C to D. So the elephant had 24 minutes remaining. So 240 plus 250. All right. Let's make sure the distances are correct here. Um, distance between important valves. A and D is two. So we should be subtracting three. Did I goof? 
Minus one, time remaining at next location. So it should be 21 plus 23. That is 440, okay. All right, I'm not crazy. What happens if I just go up? Then I go up, and then I go up, and then I go up. I just don't understand. Oh, do I need to like make a copy when I put it in the cache or something? No. Not touching that. How much time do it? Yeah, okay. Um One second. I'm going to I'm going to make it so that this has a this little static class has a copy function so that it plays nice. Paths and max flow uh, copy return new paths uh, no. and max flow uh, person path elephant path max flow. Um, slow equals this. dot copy is that gonna help me i just i don't understand why the paths are getting truncated at the end also i hate that i accidentally hit the coverage button now i just i have i have this terrible coverage thing here that i don't care about at all um no let's let's leave figuring out where the copy goes at the time that um oh i think i want to return the copy because we keep like mutating the thing that we get back Yeah, so let's, let's, uh, this flow equals, uh, this flow dot copy, just so we don't mess with it. And then let's do the same thing in the other place where we do this. This flow equals this flow dot copy. Okay, so now let's stop this, let's run it, and let's see whether or not the paths that come out play nice. Nope, the paths are still super weird. Oh, man. Going on. Okay, let's see. We get to here. Uh, let's do paths and max flow result uh, equals this. And then we'll return result. And then I'll be able to like just stop right here about this don't care about this debug just give me a result there's a result the elephant path is ccdd oh dang it okay all right yeah stop and rerun dang what a waste of time spent all that time debugging for nothing and how is this 720 Okay, so this goes from A to B, which takes one, and then it opens B, which takes one. There's 24 minutes left. 24 times 10 is 240. Let's put this in a little notepad, make sure I'm not going crazy, which I almost certainly am. So, person, 240. Uh, BB, which has 240. The elephant. Uh, goes to CC, and then opens it, which should do 240. And then it goes to DD and opens it, which should be 220, right? Is that right? Why is that not 700? Did I forget a... I must have forgotten something in one of these. Uh, actually, blah, 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 blah. We've got time remaining in next location, elephant minutes. This is, this is probably why. Wow, that is frustrating. Because the, now we're in the valves for the element. Cool, so now if I run this, do I get 700? I get 700. If I run it on the real input, do I get the right answer? 
Have I just wasted super long because of a single line typo? I have not been this mad in so long. That's not true. I was this mad earlier today. Give me the right answer. 1707. Taking slightly longer, it's a bigger problem. This is unsurprising. We can add back in the debug statements if we want to find out how fast this is going. Oh, we're just gonna sit here and wait. You know, I would feel the need to entertain you, but I just, it's been so long. We're gonna add in a, a thing, because if, if we can see something printing out, we're gonna feel better about it. Um, if debug and uh, person minutes remaining is 26 and elephant minutes remaining equals 26. System and uh, print one. Candidate. Uh, max flow computed plus this flow dot max flow candidate person path. Candidates, elephant path, slow dot, elephant path. Okay, let's stop it and rerun it and see if we can ever see anything coming out. Let's copy this and put it in the other one too, actually, and then let's start over. And let's also pay attention to what's going on over here with our CPU, whose usage is high, but not insanely so. OBS, IntelliJ, is currently eating up RAM. Okay, so it computed something. It's a good start. And the cache's RAM is only four gigs. That's a start. We are using a lot of CPU. Four and a half gigs. I'm gonna run a RAM. I have to close Google Chrome or something. Start closing other programs. You guys are just gonna get to see a lot of the assets that I have for these videos. Yes, save all this stuff, I don't care. It's a thumbnail for my chess video. I put out one today, it was pretty good. Checkmate was in it. Oh man, look at that. Yes, you can close that. I'm just gonna be opening this later, hopefully very soon. Okay, so it's it's making some progress. I'm I'm pretty tempted actually, given the pace that this is happening and the fact that it's gonna go faster as time goes on. And we just closed some stuff, which is gonna buy us a little bit more RAM. Let's keep closing things actually as we go. And close this, don't save it. Um, and then we can just close all of these windows on this display and there's a thing that I thought I was going to buy that I'm probably never going to buy so we're just going to close that. We're going to add a little note to myself in case I decide that I want to buy that later. There we go. All right. Okay. Fantastic. And it continues. And what was our max flow for part one? Seventeen oh one. So that's the other thing we can do is we can put one of these in and see whether or not it's the right answer. It's not the right answer. So 
Or it's going to be greater than that. Which, of course, we see immediately. And let's see how long it times this out for. 49 seconds. It doesn't like being DDoSed, which is fair. Let's put this over here. Then we can leave both sides up. Oh, and this just is the correct path. Okay, 35 seconds. 33, 32, 31. It's, if this is not the right answer, I'm going to have some feelings. Twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. That is the right answer. 655. Wow. Even after all of that mucking around, we're still in the top 700. This is one of our better, one of our better days. Um, yeah, for both stars. Yikes. Um, Look at that, 2353, which if we look at our first 100 to get the first star, 2353, and to get both stars was an hour and four minutes, actually. Wow. that So we definitely had, had our shot there. Uh, if we go to the leaderboard and we look at our personal stats, yeah, 220 and 26 minutes. So yeah, huge, huge fall down there, but pretty, pretty proud of this. Um, just took us forever to get the second part. Okay, well, let's finish up what we normally do. This is going to be such a long VOD. If it even recorded, if it didn't record, then I'm going to have to pull it down from Twitch, which is always like a long, arduous process because it takes forever to like prepare the stream VOD for downloading. Oh, but let's look at the leaderboards. Did anybody even do part one? Um, no. Okay, give me one second. I want to, I want to flex in my work, people. Okay, all right. I just wanted to complain in a, in a place where I could get some cred for that. Nice, okay. Uh, obviously, and let's look at the other private leaderboard. Yeah, of, of course not. This was the first This was the first problem where I felt like not, not dissatisfied with how difficult it was. Okay, now we get to do the much more relaxing. We have the answer and we can just put it in the problem statement and, and just fix the formatting. So let's let's do that together, shall we? Um, and when I do tomorrow, it's going to be pretty annoying um, because I'm going to be on my laptop and we're going to see whether or not I can stream that or not. I hope so, but hopefully I can at the very least record it. Um, valves. Uh, and the other thing that I care about is uh, flow rate. Uh, AA. Close. This is your output. Um, all the valves begin closed. Uh, it's being closed. Oh, nope. Whatever that did, don't do it. Startup valve AA, um, but it must be damaged or damaged something. Its flow rate is zero, so there's no point in opening it. However, you could spend one move, minute moving to valve BB uh, and another minute opening it. Uh, doing so would release pressure during the remaining 28 minutes uh, at a flow rate of 13. Wow, I feel so fried right now. I cannot describe how much my head feels like it was used. Um, should just make this a new interview question. Which admittedly, like conceptual, like writing the code's kind of hard, but like conceptually, this is not the most difficult problem in the world. It took me, I don't know, two, two or three. I came up with several different reasonable implementations over the course of the these couple of hours. Now, admittedly, an interview is shorter, and also you can't use public problems when you're creating interview questions at Google. Um, and this is probably a little too hard. Like my my thing is always, if I can't solve the interview question in ten minutes, I'm not allowed to ask it to you. Um, and that's just because like going through an interview is hard. 
um, versus giving an interview or like practicing interview questions is like pretty easy. Um, wow, am I not highlighting all of those numbers? All right, get Fox numbers. But um, yeah, uh, 30 minutes is this. Uh, what is the most pressure you can release? Your answer was 1701, nailed it. Um, blah, 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 looking for 26 minutes, which is right here. Um, in the example, this. Um, with the elephant helping, um, the best you could do is relieving. Wow, this problem has such a short problem statement uh, and such a difficult solution. 2455, pros are complete, provides two bold stars. Fantastic. Um, we're just going to write function comments and then I'm going to explain what's going on and then that's going to be that. Okay. So, um, this. Parse in uh, input, storing the adjacency information. Uh, am I going to host uh, this somewhere or something? Yeah, it's on it's on GitHub. Um, in fact, there's a let me. If you want to see how I've done all of these things, you can see see my GitHub there. Um, I created the name back when I. I'm missing a J here. Uh, back when I worked at Bloomberg, where my internal handle was mdeck1. So if you ever try and mdeck1 at bloomberg.net or com or whatever it is, probably net, um, that would have been me. Do you code awful some? Is that a thing that you spend your time doing? I'm trying to remember the context in which you started following. You've been following for a while, and you have one follower. Yeah, unfortunately on Twitch, if the if, if somebody's just a viewer, you can't like figure out anything about them. Um, I guess max pressure releasable. Um, I did add a cache. Um, it's the max pressure for the uh, remaining uh, time given. Um, Oh, nice. Me, me too. Um, Being a software engineer is dope. I hope you like it. I like it. Um, you'll see following. Uh, followed me from a Hearthstone stream a long time ago. Ah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, back when I played Hearthstone, I quit playing Hearthstone in 2019 because of the whole Hong Kong controversy um, and never went back, which I lament a little bit. I really liked playing the game. I had a lot of fun. I got really good at it and it's it's hard to get that good at something. So giving that up is like learning that giving up something you're really good at is uh, unpleasant. It's not the first time I've done that, but it's one of the more resonant times that I've done that recently. Like that's something I got good at as an adult and I've tried getting good at things as an adult and it's way harder to get good at things as an adult than it is as a kid. And it's not because kids are better at learning stuff, it's because you have more time um, and because you're not, like, as a kid, you're compared to other kids. So like, if you're not that good at something, you're still like, well, I'm the best 10 year old. Um, and also like, you don't have the sphere of influence that the internet is where the internet is huge. So like you go on and you're like, oh, I'm in like the 30th percentile for whatever, right? I've been trying to learn chess for several years now. I'm in like the 50th or 60th percentile. So among people that play chess, I'm average. And it took a long time to get to average. But as a kid, I wouldn't dream of being average until like way longer into it. Um, next, um, Step for search, um, uh, caching. Um, that's that's pretty much all it does. Uh, so this, let's see. So there's termination condition. Uh, there's cache check. Um, there's. Uh, DFS, there's cache update, right? Yeah, 
Um, max pressure from important points. And this um, computes the max flow findable for the given remaining uh, places to check. Um, uses the following techniques. Um, DFS, um, but excluding all unnecessary, um, I, I, admittedly, you do have a lot of free time. Like think back to what it was like in high school. You went to high school all day. You did extracurriculars like all afternoon and evening, and then you get home and did homework. Like I didn't have a lot of true, true free time. And it's like, well, the stuff you did in the afternoons was, was free time. And it's like, ah, sort of, but like the band class I took was until 5 p.m. in high school. Um, but that was also like the equivalent of like, now that I'm signed up for adult Frisbee league or whatever, right? That's the thing that I sign up to and go to whatever. Um, there is a lot more just like random stuff that you have to deal with. You have to like get your car checked and clean your house and do your laundry and do all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I, I have a lot of free time. It's also just like the focus and the dedication. Like the one thing about school that was nice is that school from eight until three was, it didn't, it just didn't drain you very much. Like it, it just wasn't that hard to deal with. I'll, uh, nodes that don't matter. Huge time saver from two factorial possibilities. Um, down to factorial cash. Um, uh, this is termination uh, condition. Cash check. Um, and this is just TFS on important points. Cash update. Cool. And then there's all this stuff that we can delete now because that's the brute force version that doesn't work. Uh, these. Cash names are totally fine. And then uh, that's okay. Press this, there's like get max pressure releasable, totally fine. Um, uses uh, DFS to compute the shortest path uh, between start and end. Uh, there's the uh, path of distance between start and end. Cool. So there's lots of things about this that are unoptimized, but let's go through. So what problem were we trying to solve today? Well, um, in today's problem, you're given uh, basically a list of adjacencies like this, where you have a node, the node has some number associated with it, and then it tells you what other nodes it connects to. And you get a full list of this and everything is bi-directional. So if A if A goes to I, then I goes to A and so forth. That just happens to be true. And the idea is you wanna traverse this where you go around and it takes uh, one minute to walk from any node to any adjacent, any adjacent node. So A can go to D, I, or B in, in one minute. And uh, activating this number takes one minute. So for example, if I start at A and then I walk to B and then I open B, then I'm gonna get 13 for the remaining 28 minutes. I start with 30 minutes. And the idea is I'm trying to release pressure in the volcano that I'm in. Um, the uh, idea here is I wanna know within the 30 minutes that I can walk around and open up valves, what is the maximum amount of pressure that I can release? So you'd think, okay, well, maybe I can do a greedy algorithm where I walk to the things with the highest flow rate or whatever. And I just did a DFS on this and uh, my input's this long, but I, I used some caching and stuff. So I ended up doing like doing this part pretty quickly. It wasn't that hard. You read in the stuff, you run DFS on this set of things. Um, and then you return the number that comes back out of that relatively easy. However, for part two, it gets a little bit more complicated. Um, you found some underground elephants and one of those elephants you can teach over the course of the first four minutes um, exactly which valves to go to. Uh, so now each of you has 26 minutes to run around and do stuff. So that means you basically want to like 
have you and the elephant run around and try and do stuff. Now, the trouble is that that, like, uh, squares the number of, like, paths that you care about, um, which means that you, you end up with, like, a lot of... Uh, you end up, like, traversing this graph for, like, twice as long, which makes your... Um, Yeah, again, it, it squares the it squares the amount of time that it needs to take. So it goes from like a pretty reasonable, I don't know, thirty seconds or something, to something insane. Um, I don't know, thirty seconds squared is only fifteen minutes, but it was going to take a lot longer than that because you're you're. I don't know. It, it's yeah, I can't remember exactly, but it's it's bad. Um, the DFS is just like really large because you. Yeah, your branching factor is much larger instead of like. I guess our adjacency here is like kind of two. So it's like two to the number of steps you can take uh, with like valves that you can open. So it's like two to the 30. But now it would be like two to the 26 times two to the 26. Um, so it's four to the 26, which is way worse. It's the same as squaring it. Okay, same same thing. Anyways, it was gonna take way too long. It just wasn't it wasn't making any progress. So instead, what it is, I realized if you look at this, most of the flow rates here are zero. So I can just only look at the uh, the values, the valves where the flow rates are uh, above zero, and then I can just do DFS running around to those. Uh, the other thing is that implementation gets a little tricky because uh, you can't just uh, like make a move and subtract one from your time remaining because if you and the element and each of you has a certain amount of time remaining and if you try and like keep your times synchronized uh that even gets bad because like if you're both just moving around you could just move each of you but both of you aren't moving around uh it could be that both of you move one and then one of you opens a valve but the other one of you moves and then this person opens a valve, so this one moves and stuff and so you can get out of sync you can't you can't do some of the nice things there so then you have to like take steps where like you try opening the valve where you currently are but only if that valve isn't open and the yeah, like you end up with a lot of complicated stuff. So instead, what I did is I just tracked them as totally separate times, and then I just did DFS moving myself around until I ran, ran out of moves, and then I did DFS on the other one. And so you basically just try all the different combinations as you go through, and that runs fast enough. It takes, I don't know, two minutes, something like that. So good good enough for me. You know, if you made this file about twice as long, it might not work anymore. But um, I felt like the optimization here was pretty good. And then the other optimization that we used in figuring this stuff out is that we... Um, figured out a nice uh, way to represent stuff so that we would get cache hits. Um, and then we stored uh, maps of, of the cache that we cared about. <coughs> hey, me machine Rex. Nice to see you. I was just explaining how I solved uh, today's advent of code problems. Um, and I think that that's pretty much all I got. So I'm actually gonna peace out now. Uh, sorry, but this is not, not the greatest time to, to have showed up. I hope you have a good night. I'm, uh, I'm going to sign off. Have a good one.